Well, hello there. I'm Howard of Ford or Learn to Fly, and today we continue to get hands-on testing of the new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Our next live encounter with this new flight simulator happened over three days in the technical alpha. During this time, I have streamed our interactions on my Twitch channel and tested it with hundreds of fellow simmers. We had a lot of fun, unexpected results and discoveries, and some things we have come to expect from 2024. This time, we all got to test it on our own PC setups, our own peripherals, and take our time to really ring it out. I will document that experience and my findings in the next video. Here, I want to address the remaining questions that I introduced in the previous video. I've already answered the first two questions, but I want to elaborate and, as promised, address the last questions in this segment. Then we will expose some details during testing that dispel the confusion surrounding the new sim. I also want to mention I will produce a separate video on career mode. That's probably going to be tomorrow that I record that, which many are confused about, career mode. I am excited about FS 2024 now and glad I had the opportunity to take our time and try anything we could think about on our own systems in our own home cockpit. During our live Twitch sessions, I asked the audience what to look at next and the suggestions kept coming. I summarize that in my next video, but here I can answer question number two after this new testing session. Let's start with my original five questions just to remind you. Uh, and these are the results of the survey I conducted with my Twitch channel followers. I introduced these questions in my first video on FS 2024 at Grand Canyon here on YouTube. First, why a new simulator when we have been getting free sim updates, world updates, new models, new planes? Uh, we answered this in my previous video. I gave you like a five point reason why they needed to go to a new simulator. Uh, second though, and this is the one I want to focus on, Will all my planes and scenery work in the new sim? Up until today, we couldn't answer that question without testing. We just took Microsoft's word for it that they said most things should work, all right? So the answer is yes, but to be safe, Microsoft said there might be an exception that might not work in FS 2024. So let me address this one right now. During this technical alpha, under the advice from fellow tester and simmer Dr. Notham, we moved a few airplanes and scenery packages from our FS 2020 community folder into our new FS 2024 community folder. And then we went and flew them. They all worked fine. But here's one detail that we discovered when a developer was live with us. The air show smoke wasn't coming from the exhaust pipe as it should, or as it even does in 2020. It seemed to come out of the side of the plane and instead a heat blur came from the exhaust. Here, take a look at this. So a small detail like that would have to be addressed by the developer to make their product an FS 2024 product. It doesn't stop us from using the product, but rather lets the developer ensure that it works as it should in the new sim. The developer would leave the 2020 product as is for those staying with 2020 and add the newly modified version of the plane as a 2024 version. Those who stay with 2020 still have a working version and those who move to 24 have an updated version that they can take advantage of in the new SIM features. I tested helicopters and airplanes and they all flew in the new SIM without any modifications at all. Keep in mind that the new SIM was installed in an extra drive and not an upgrade to our 2020 SIM. As such, we had to find the new community folder and copy some things there to test. Not our whole community folder, as mine's something like 13 gigabytes uh, and four years of Twitch streaming. Uh, but the next test was, was scenery. Uh, we, we moved some scenery packages into the FS2024 community folder and everything worked as expected. So that was nice to hear. That was what they promised and that worked out well in my tests. Uh, my test was, the first one I did was with the Oshkosh scenery, where we hold our landing competition on Twitch every year. It includes extra scenery for the tower, the VOR, and the colored dots on the runways. They showed up in 2024 without modifications or anomalies. This was a relief and a pleasure to see it in action. It was an easy process to move files and folders to the new community folder. We're not sure how we will install the final product in November, but we will assume you simply point it to your current community folder instead of moving files one by one. So let us address the final three questions that I promised I would in this session. 
Third, what are some technical highlights of the new Flight Simulator 2024, which many are calling FS2024 now? Now, this is a big question and one that will be addressed by me and my fellow testers up to the release date and forever beyond. Everyone wants to know what we're getting by buying a new sim. You know, what do we get? And then when we already have a good one now. So that was a big hurdle for Microsoft. Um, Microsoft have reached the technical limitations of the current sim in, you know, in 2020. When the simming community have requested new features and desirable functions, the current sim could not technically do that. So they needed to start from the ground up and build a new core sim that could do all the new requests while keeping the sim compatible with all our old add-ons. That is no small feat for any software developer. So technical highlights will be a deeper topic in more detail with future video sessions as we prove what Seb and Jorg were talking about when they presented the new sim to us in Grand Canyon. Here are the technical highlights we will uncover in the coming weeks and months. Let's start with the first one. Soft body simulations such as balloons, banners, parachutes, including airplane chutes, and pilot flags. An interactive world such as 3D ground collisions, 3D water waves collisions, which I'm especially interested in with my amphibious flying on, on lakes and rivers and oceans. Interactive physics such as pick up and drop, now, we also heard from Working Title, uh, they vow to simulate the full simulator pilot experience in avionics. And we've already seen their work and we've already seen the great work that they do. And they're going to continue to keep doing that as we move forward into the new sim. Got Friends was also there, uh, who are now part of Microsoft, bringing two new gliders and the famous Draco X. You know, these are highlights. These are technical highlights. These are things we heard at our presentation. And here I can only show you pictures so far. We haven't had access to that here in the sim. Uh, they have plenty to work on right up to the release date of the sim in November. So they're going to be pretty busy, those guys that got friends. And they are happy, they happen to be a partner of ours on Ford Learn to Fly Twitch stream. Um, the, the release date of November 19th for the new sim is going to introduce 32 new airplanes. That's a big endeavor. Their top version and the most expensive Aviator Edition has the most amount of planes you could imagine right from the start. But some of the new ones include the Boeing Dreamlifter, the C-17 Globemaster II, the Amphibian Aerospace Albatross, and the Airbus A400M Atlas, to name a few. It will, I'll make a separate video covering the 32 new airplanes before and after release date. So another technical highlight that we learned from their presentation and as we start looking at it this weekend, new static data from around the world. And this is, this is an updated Bing data from around the world. One of the biggest features of the sim now and in the future is the fact that it covers the whole world with satellite imagery, photogrammetry, etc., and then some custom made stuff. The addition of all the towers in the world. Now this is no small endeavor. When they asked, how do we find this information? They had to hire someone who already collects this kind of data, or they had to collect the data themselves. The radio towers, the antennas, the TV towers, all the kinds of towers that we will encounter while we're flying are now in the right place where they're supposed to be and the right kind of tower. That's no small feat, but a realistic one when you're flying in an area that you know well in real life. The addition of all the helipads of the world. Oh my gosh, it's something like, could there, have, could there have been 30,000 of them? I forget the number they gave us. It's the, the number's fading now as, as we go further and further away from that event. But can you imagine trying to gather that kind of information so that you accurately have all the helipads? We natively support helicopters in the sim now. Uh, one of them that I was really interested in when Seb was demonstrating was something called photometric lighting. And this gives us realistic lighting with considerations for the real atmospheric conditions at the time how daylight filters through all that. Scene complexity and textures in 4,000 times more detail. You've heard this from others. And we won't see that in the Tech Alpha. This Tech Alpha we're doing is a scaled down version of the sim so that they can measure what's happening to us between us and the servers in the cloud. That's the main reason they're doing it. So we're not getting the full sim. My install was very quick and it was only about nine gigabytes. Sounds like a lot, but it's not really compared to something like 120 gigabytes for the current sim. 
but this is a scaled down version, so we can't judge it by that yet, all right? So some of the other technical highlights, I mean, I talked about photometric lighting. I could, I'm going to talk a lot more about that when we get into it later. Scene complexity and textures in 4,000 times more detail. Got to say that once more. All right, more realistic hot air balloons and ultralight helos. So hot air balloons, they already started. The high performance group already started doing hot air balloons more realistically. But now, holy moly, wait till we see what happens there. And we've seen the cutscenes that show it already, but wait till we start trying that. We haven't got those available to us yet. Uh, so those are technical highlights. In addition, the new sim adds extra features that some simmers have asked for, such as career mode. That's my next video, because it's, it's huge. And I go through a number of certifications to show you what that's like. I'm going to devote the whole video to career mode. Uh, there's also photography mode, and we'll go take a look at that and see what that's all about also. Uh, challenge League with weekly top scores. And, you know, that's, that's going to be fascinating, too. There's going to be a whole group of people, about four to five million people, looking for that. They want to have the Challenge League and be on leaderboards. And the leaderboard expires every week, so you want to see who's on the board every week. Um, I mentioned World Photographer with challenges to get the best aerial photography shots and rewards to go along with them. So, so let's move along to the fourth question I posed in the last video and, and provide some details. The fourth question was, how many people use the current FS 2020 today? And do we expect everyone to move to 2024? I didn't answer them in the last video. There's so much stuff there. When I looked at it afterwards and published it and everything was done, wait a minute, I didn't answer all the questions that I asked. <laughs> so that's what I'm here for. So let me answer, uh, let, me, let me just go and have a look at this. So I'll start with the second part first. All right, do we expect everyone to move to 2024? No. And people have told me outright already. How much more do I really want from a simulator? I'm good right now with 2020, right? So we don't expect everyone to move to 2024. First, the cost. Why buy a new sim that can cost up to a couple of hundred dollars when you have a perfectly working one right now? If you tune into the Facebook forums discussing the new sim, many will say they're staying put and Microsoft have committed to supporting the current FS 2020 at least until the year 2028. And then they will assess how many are still on the platform. That's how it works. Now, the first part of that question is how many people use FS 2020 today? The answer is a staggering 15 million, 1.5 million people. Of that total user base, 3 to 4 million are core simmers like me who use this platform to simulate real flight, complete with checklists, real world lessons, and practice. As a pilot in real life, I used FSX and X-Plane to practice my real lessons at home. So five to six million users want more of a challenge in the form of rewards and extreme flight. They want competitions, they want challenges, and even a career path to the heavies. Which brings us to my final question, the game versus the sim question from the simulation. So. You know, we get this question from simulation pilots on other sim platforms. As you can see, five to six million users want more of the game competition. Points awarded, leaderboards, extreme flight in airplanes. You and I will never fly in real life. That part would be considered the game part. Reach new levels, have a goal, compete with fellow simmers for points. But there is the core three to four million series flyers that will use the simulation to its fullest. As a GA pilot in real life, I want the avionics to be the most realistic, the flight model to work as it should, and ATC to be accurate. I need to simulate real flight. So for me and fellow pilots, it's not a game. It's a full-fledged flight simulator. To real airliner pilots who want to brush up in their home flight simulator, all the checklist items need to work, and all the systems of an airliner need to be clickable and realistic. This is serious stuff. And we expect the sim to work as it does in real life. To us, this isn't a game. So the answer to the game versus sim question is simply both. It's a game to the casual flyer who couldn't care less if you simulate a GTN 750 properly. And it's a sim to the user who's practicing lessons learned in real airplanes to stay current. The satisfaction that it simulates real flight accurately is important. 
In summary, there are a lot of current FS2020 Home Flight Simulator users. You can bet many of them are on Xbox and super happy about it. More are also on PC, where we can pick the hardware and buy all the add-ons we wish from websites and developers. We can all fly in multiplayer sessions, no matter what hardware we are flying and where we are in the world. This is the draw of Microsoft Flight Simulator community, as it is with simulators before it. It's just that our world is getting richer with this new FS2024 and the feature set it brings with it. Now this last part of the segment contains live footage from our technical alpha hands-on. See you again in my next installment where I dive deep into career mode and see what that is all about. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this material. It indicates if I should continue making this content for the community. I'm Howard of Ford to Fly. See you soon.